just waiting for the nun sister act crossover. I think a musical Valak would be even creepier. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Today we're going to be continuing my Conjuring Universe review series with the 2023 supernatural horror sequel, The Nun 2. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie-related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. All my reviews include a breakdown of the pros and cons, my rating, and some tailored film recommendations, so be sure to watch through to the end of this video for all of that extra content. The Nun 2 stars Tysa Formiga, Jonas Bloquet, and Storm Reed, and was directed by Michael Chavez. Four years after the events of The Nun, it tells the story of Sister Irene as she's brought onto another mysterious case involving the demon nun, Valak. I get it. People are sick of sequels. Every time a sequel gets announced, pained cries for originality echo through movie theater halls everywhere. But so do the sound of footsteps, because sequels and familiar franchises still attract audiences. Long-running horror franchises are nothing new and have been a staple of the genre since the late 70s, but cinematic universes are a fairly recent film fad. Despite the conceptual origins stemming from the Universal Monster Shared Universe back in the 30s, comparatively few modern cinematic universes are horror-based, which makes The Conjuring Universe a continuing oddity. This franchise has had some great highs and some disappointing lows over the years, but the first nun remains the frustrating low point of the series. The the incredibly creepy title character was squandered in a dull and largely ineffective movie. Following that disappointing outing, a sequel to The Nun wasn't exactly high on my wish list. But even back in 2018, it seemed like an inevitability. Bizarrely, sequels to The Conjuring spin-offs within the franchise have had a surprisingly good track record, and just as bizarrely, that trend continues here. The Nun 2 is a marked improvement over its predecessor. It's not a fantastic film by any means, and the improvement probably isn't quite as significant as the one we saw from Annabelle to Annabelle Creation. Creation, but The Nun 2 is okay. Unlike Annabelle Creation, this in-universe follow-up is actually a sequel. It functions like a traditional sequel, with returning characters and a continued storyline, but it's also what I would consider a very accessible sequel, because it doesn't require that you watch the first film. It gives you all that you need to understand the characters and the situation, while also quickly filling you in on the key pieces from that first movie. This sequel expands on the gothic mystery of that first film, to give us another thriller-tinged investigation, this time in search of a religious relic. The story is definitely a bit scattered at first. It's intriguing, but the relevancy of the various characters and storylines we're introduced to aren't always the clearest. All of these things do eventually converge, but it takes a little too long to get there. The first Nun film always felt like a bit of an outlier. It was set in 1952, but the remote Romanian monastery made it feel like it was temporally far removed from the other films. This sequel still features plenty of old cathedrals, but the city settings help to identify its time period a little better. This also helps contribute to an improved atmosphere, with an increased number of locations and a higher number of people interacting in these locations. Things could have taken a technical nosedive, but instead, this film features some nice production design and some occasionally impressive cinematography. The film still has many of the hallmarks of modern horror, but uses them more effectively than expected based on the first Nun film. Like that movie, The Nun 2 is loaded with jump scares, but some of the tension-filled moments leading up to them are actually earned this time around, so more often than not, these jump scares are fun rather than annoying. The scares do get a bit repetitive, and there are probably two dozen instances of us seeing something creepy in the shadows behind an unsuspecting character, but some creative scares and unsettling creature designs were sprinkled in to balance things out. As I mentioned before, The Nun 2 is a significant improvement over The Nun, but it still suffers from many of the same issues. There are some intense scenes and some fun moments featuring Valak, but once again, the title character is underutilized in her own solo movie. The story relies on convoluted moments of chance. The connection between Sister Irene and Lorraine is further hinted at, but never expanded upon. And jump scares run rampant. But it manages to be interesting. It's got some decent performances, there are some tense and chilling moments, and it's reasonably entertaining. It's a big improvement over The Nun. It's not great, or really even all that good, but it's also not bad. 
It's just okay. And I know people tend to prefer it when movies are at one end of the good or bad spectrum, but sometimes having a film that's just okay is just what you need. And The Nun 2 fills that role as a perfectly adequate, enjoyable enough popcorn horror movie. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons. Pro number one is the atmosphere. Although never reaching the atmospheric heights of the core Conjuring films, this spin-off sequel is much stronger than expected on an atmospheric front. The film is pervaded by gothic horror elements, which help to set the stage, enhanced by some unexpectedly good production design and some decent cinematography. The mystery and investigation elements of the story add to the intrigue, which help to heighten the tension and anticipation and this tension is released through a series of fairly effective jump scares. This gives the filmmaking style a more modern flavor that not everyone will enjoy, but I thought it was a solid blend. On the con side, the biggest issue is how scattered the story feels. For the first two-thirds of the film, this story is stretched across two seemingly disconnected storylines, each with their own set of characters and subplots. These two storylines do eventually converge in a satisfying way, but it takes a long time to get there, and introduces a number of extraneous elements. For example, there are quite a few scenes featuring a character being bullied, but there's not much of a payoff or comeuppance associated with that storyline. Instead, it's mostly used as a recurring plot device to put the bullied character in potentially scary situations. None of these scattered elements are outright bad, and the storyline is much more interesting and cohesive than the first Nun film, but it was still a bit of a letdown here. Before I give you my rating and recommendations, I want to remind you that if you're interested in buying The Nun 2 or any of the other films I mentioned today, I do have affiliate links for all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy using one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you'd use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. I'm gonna give The Nun 2 3 out of 5 paws. It's an altogether average horror film, but a nice improvement over the first Nun movie. Its story is scattered, but the atmosphere and intrigue of the mystery are enough to keep you invested until the unsettling absurdity of the third act sinks its claws or horns into you. I would recommend The Nun 2 to fans of the Conjuring universe or those who like religious horror films. Like its predecessor, the connection to the rest of the Conjuring franchise is still very loose here, but it's certainly a better solo outing for our favorite demon nun. The Nun 2 will work as a direct follow-up to the first film, but watching that film isn't necessary, so even Conjuring Universe newcomers will be able to enjoy it, provided they don't mind jump scares. If you liked The Nun 2, I would recommend The Da Vinci Code. Although not a horror film, this is another movie that focuses on the unraveling of a religious mystery and features the search for a lineage-based relic. If you want another horror franchise, Supernatural Mystery Investigation, you might want to check out The Exorcist 3. Loosely connected to the first Exorcist film, it is a bit of a change in direction for that franchise, functioning as a serial killer police procedural for much of its runtime, before pivoting in the third act to something much more supernaturally over the top. And if you want some more of The Nun, you should watch The Conjuring 2. This was the franchise introduction of the character, and although she was featured more prominently in 2018's The Nun, the story and technical aspects of The Conjuring 2 are far superior to that film. Alright, a couple questions for you guys. Number one, have you seen The Nun 2? If so, what'd you think of it? And number two, would you like to see more spin-offs within this franchise or more core Conjuring films? Be sure to leave your answers in the comments below so we can get a discussion going. All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insight, or information out of this review, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe if you're at it to see more videos like this. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies, the way life should be.